Hello, welcome to day 190, 365 days towards racial change. My name is Thomas Nyback. We're here talking about black issues in America as I see them. My little narrow perspective uh, from my experience, uh, maybe current events. We look at history, politics, finances. But I probably need to throw some health in there. Literacy, all kinds of literacy, financial social, you know, personal, all that, uh, you know, academics, education, you know, what makes this such an important factor of how I experience America? America's very insidious on that issue. We can reach back a couple hundred years into the past and see, um, what that's all about, why that is, why it persists. It persists, I say, because it's convenient for some, right? It's, it's, you know, it's not like going out in the yard and chewing on rocks, right? It's not, that's not a comfortable thing. And people will come and take us and enforce their care on us if we go out and chew rocks. Uh, but when you have a portion of society uh, where this uh, strange dysfunction persists, you know, it's it's got to be a benefit. It's got to feel good to somebody, you know. I, I'm not, I wouldn't call myself a beneficiary of the American system where its basis uh, comes, uh, is, uh, constructed relies on its foundation rest along color lines that's uh, that's a big problem uh, in the world in what's going on and we have to well hopefully we we'll get away from that you know it's like trying to find out where fire started like it, it's happened Mankind mastered it so long ago, we don't know what happened, you know. Uh, it's origination, how we can, how we've come to uh, utilize it and stuff, you know. No other creature on the planet handles fire. And we've got a lot of colorful myths and legends about it, but, you know, what was that first man or woman that controlled fire? You know, <coughs> uh, that's the way we want to see racism someday. You know, it's just, it's in the past. Uh, we don't know. See, the problem is, like in America, America's racism. We we know the origins. It's got specific starting points and all that. You know. We want to put that so far in the past that it's just a memory that we can say, you know, you know, it's like, it's like, ew, you know, people on planet Earth were like that at one point, you know, and so, so it could be so abstract, you know, um, so far removed, you know, that that's where we're going, but you know, to get there, we need to plant some seeds today. Get some initiatives going. Uh, get be consistent at, at uh, putting some things together. Uh, so on that point, you know, we need to. My little project. This is going to be one year project. It's being digitized, so it'll probably outlive me. Uh, now that the way we've configured our technology which is good. I hope maybe someday it'll catch fire and find some interest. I don't know. Uh, the project, this year-long project is personal more than anything. So I'm not looking for numbers and ratings uh, to sell products and stuff and all that. I'm unloading. This is my catharsis. So I'm being catharized uh, through this activity. 
ringed out uh, in my spirit, in my mind, my thought process, uh, in my relation, my orientation in America. Excuse me, sorry. Don't worry, I'm very much interested <laughs> in this project. So what we have here is first thing is the mind. How does the black mind move in America, in the American system? Uh, is it still challenged uh, by a slave mentality? Is that being passed on from generation to generation of black folks? Conversely, flip side of the same coin concerning the mentality, especially in America, where does the white mind find itself? And the white mind is not overly concerned about these issues because that it is it dwells, it exists, it's immersed in the privilege, in the status of it. And we can't be too angry at them at it because the American system is it was created by European whites it's administered by European whites and uh, it's created for whites you know you could put that almost in any order and so the white mind with its privilege its its ease of movement uh, the way it engages the system uh, those things, uh, it's, kind, it's kind of a blind spot for white folks. You know, I, if, we, if we could have a revival among white po folks to say, wow, you know, uh, my privilege is so uh, complete, written into the network, uh, the framework of this nation, that these people over here are at a disadvantage, you know. I really want to do something about that. Now, I, I'm, a, I'm a kind of a conspiracy theorist, things like that. So I already feel there are plenty of people in power, especially whites who know the status quo, know the system works like that in their favor and are fine with that. <laughs> uh, second big interest is for financial literacy. Do black people know how their money works, who they're spending it with, where it's going, how to project it into the future, how to get that dollar working in a way that's going to uh, help bring about some success uh, in the future? Uh, I'm starting to say, I've started to say in the videos, you know, if I, I wish I had a in my equating, in my decision making in life, with money, sex, alcohol, uh, vocation, all these things, education, I wish I had a put in the ingredient of longevity. You know, you know, it's not that I would think thought I was going to live forever or die soon or anything. I just living this long was not part of my thinking I did not I couldn't how, how could I fathom decades in the future me being there here now uh, I don't know how you say it <laughs> but it happened and uh, now I'm starting to get a little more serious about those issues all right I'm inspired by a man named Dr. Claude Anderson read three of his works and we referenced these works uh, pretty heavily here at Racial Change. Uh, black History Reader, 101 Questions You Never Thought to Ask. Black Labor, White Wealth, Search for Power and Economic Justice. And Dr. Anderson's National Plan to Empower Black America, Poweronomics. You can find Dr. Anderson at poweronomics.com. Behind me, you'll see the hashtag us 2 symbol. you find Black women supporting each other, conversing, uh, doing their thing. Check out Black Enough, B-L-A-G-G-E-N-U-F, kind of a black Facebook experience. Of course, there are many probably group groups on Facebook. I'm not a big social media guy. 
or anything like that. I'm not on my device 24-7 and stuff like that. Um, if you can't find your flavor or your voice, you know, you were just surfing and you were seeing people who completed a year-long project on YouTube. You know, a lot of people have done that, different subjects, and you stumbled on to me. Listen to me. Look, if you can't find your flavor or your voice, do what I did and others. Start your own and see what happens. Got a handful of people on a private email list that I send content to, interact with periodically. Um, the content's the same. They get the link to the video and the description. Just They just get it from me personally in their email. Um, okay, and on that note, uh, finish up, let you know we also reference Uncle Tom's Cabin. We're going to get to that. We're going through this big uh, series and section on leadership and uh, now analyzing, looking at black leadership right now, but I promise you we're going to get to that uh, in depth uh, pretty heavily. Oops, sorry about that. In, uh, in a couple more days, we got a few more issues to wade through on black leadership, which is what we're continuing to talk about today. Dr. Anderson, in his book, um, Black Labor, White Wealth, gives seven points of analysis for the black leader. Uh, I included two more. Yesterday we talked about, uh, well, the, I included two more. They have to do with subordinates or participants within an organized black community. You're going to have a, it's going to be an organized space. There's going to be men and women over that. It's, it's how, it's how you elevate. You're not going to get, uh, you're not going to elevate, be taken seriously in all kinds of dysfunction, disorganization, and things like that. It's going to be a very well structured, um, space, a black community that's growing, thriving, that's competitive as whites, Arabs, Hispanics. You've seen, heard this <laughs> before, Asians and whatnot. So I, I added two points about the community. You know, his, his, he, t he had seven specific points of analysis, not exhaustive. I'm sure if you talk to him today, he'd say, you know, I'd maybe elaborate on this. I might add that. Uh, I just added two more points on the community that's being led. I think that's important. He does. He addresses plenty of that in there. So yesterday we talked about black denial, <laughs> and you you know you got blacks who are fine. You in a, you got one spectrum who have been so chewed up, beaten up by the system that that there's no energy even to engage. And then there, I think there's another extreme of blacks who have navigated well, done well, and don't feel any urgency to bring change or do better in the system. They, they've arrived. They, they navigate this white system quite well, and there's no issue. I'm somewhere in between. Um, because I just had spent much time with whites, yet at the same time I know I have uh, hit boundaries and barriers because of my skin color. You know, so I, I'm somewhere in between. That's probably a fortunate event for history. Last thing I want to talk about is the caliber of a leader's uh, subordinates, audience, participants. You know, they, they, these people, the group of people are going to have to be of a certain nature. There's going to have to be a willingness. You'll find this probably more in churches, what I'm going to talk about. Uh, I, but I don't want to confine our, this community, this hopeful community to, um, religious space because there's some issues that later on 
uh, in the year. We got we still got plenty of time left. I'm going to address the church and some issues and things like that. Uh, but today I, I want to picture this community without the being underneath, you know, the roof with a steeple with a cross on top and things like that. I, I don't want to do that because that that's a that's a whole other challenge for myself and and a lot of other blacks too. So we're gonna we're talking about the caliber of the lead. So don't just turn yourself off, go to passive mode to think that I'm going to talk about things that go on in church. No, that's not what I'm pushing here. I'm pushing this picture of community. Let's look outside of ecclesiastical concerns, ec ecclesia, and stuff like that. No, it's, it's a different thing. I, I think it's going to be much more powerful and effective. Church is valid, um, but we really screwed up, God. We're killing people in church services. Nowadays, it's come to that, so I, I don't want to be restricted uh, to having a thriving community from exclusively from that space. All right, uh, so the caliber, uh, social, socially, you know, the people are going to understand that we're from all walks of life and we're coming from different backgrounds and we, we're agreeing willingly to uh, participate in some overall grand scheme down the road. Now, and I'm all for, look, wherever we're at, I w I'd like, it'd be nice if the black community, the participants recognized that they're just plant planting seeds for the future. Look, 300 years from now, wherever the black community is at in this, I want them to be like, you know, this is, we're just planting seeds. Yeah, back then, 2019, the crazy guy on YouTube was playing seeds. Now we're all millionaires and billionaires, and we're in political control. We have land. We, we own massive uh, portions of land, but we're only planting seeds. That's the mentality I'm hoping it erupts uh, from this. But it's a mosaic. This grassroots. We're getting started. Uh, we got. We're getting laborers, carpenters, cooks, mechanics, builders, dressmakers, clothing, uh, logistics, drivers, uh, political power. Uh, you name it. You know. Let's have it. Let's go. 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 But it's all these portions that are going to make this. You, and you look at uh, other thriving communities successful communities, they got their grassroots, they got their political power, everybody works together. Ask the Hmong, Arabs, ask these people, talk to them if they will talk to you. I think they will. Um, and you'll see how that works. I'm concerned about uh, educational level, continuing education. I don't want people <coughs> I'm not saying exclusively people who have a, the, there's just that uh, academic, I've got an academic tooth. You know, you have a sweet tooth. I've got salt, fat, and sweet tooth, you know. So I like all these unhealthy foods and stuff. But I've also also got, I have an academic tooth. And uh, well, I'm actually going to finish my degree uh, this year coming up and all this stuff. But, uh, you know, I'm not saying take it to that extreme, but always be learning. Uh, don't be idle. Be careful about being too idle. You know, uh, can you give yourself 15 minutes a day to read a book? Uh, put a book in your hand. Put your device down. I had a philosophy professor advocated having a physical book, but getting so far away from paper and uh, 
it's opening up some pages. I, I'm always encouraged. I read a lot on the train. I take public transportation. So I'll see other people with their books. I'm encouraged. I'm part of a community. But co continue some education somehow. Keep learning something, whatever you're interested in. You know, don't be like my father who was so beat down after work that, you know, he came home, he had arrived because he had that success out there. But, you know, he just comes home and he sits on the couch, drinks beer and smokes cigarettes. Dude. And gets horrified by the evening news. We lived near a pretty big city and it was, you know, when he came home, we had a, hour and a half to two hours of violence. Like that was his life. <laughs> Man, come on, dad. You know, rarely interacted. You know, and I get, you know, he's on his feet all day and it's all this, you know. Uh, you, you gotta want, you know, this, you gotta be looking forward in life at something. Something you don't know, some some question in your life that that's like dangled a, a carrot in front of you that you're chasing. Cook a better cake, build a better mousetrap, uh, play your instrument better, understand your children to the nth degree, um, uh, understand the universe, uh, understand God, you know. <sighs> You know, something that every time you, you something clicks in and snaps in about uh, in your understanding, it, you, you just, it just opens up a new vista on things to learn and understand. You know, to have, have that. How to make a better peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You know, make, use your life. You know, there's a, a food truck out here and there <laughs> it's a it's a great thing people eat it up but it's peanut butter and jelly but you know they put fish and meat on it you know they just there's no boundaries to how far you can take a peanut butter and jelly sandwich that kind of desire and hunger you know it's, I wouldn't want to be with a community that's just can't wait to let their hair down. Uh, man, my, my day's not over unless I've done something to challenge my mind, to uh, practice something. You got to. How can you not? Is my thing. So that's the thing. So I, I'm hoping that. You know, the caliber of these people in this community has a uh, academic tooth that needs to be, that thirst needs to be quenched and addressed in some way every day on some level. Drugs and alcohol. And eh, eh, on drugs. All drugs. And I know, like, we got plenty of black community, a lot of people smoking dope. I live in a, uh, a state where uh, recreational use is uh, legal, but I've had my ups and downs with cocaine and whatnot, alcohol. Alcohol sparingly, I'm not going to take that away from mankind. Uh, <laughs> You know, that's something, you know, Jesus, you know, is going to drink. So I can't, I'm not coming against Jesus. But uh, drugs, no, don't, don't mess with drugs. You know, there, there's, there's medicinal use for weed and stuff like that. But checking out chemically and stuff, uh, black folks are the last people on earth that need 
to have go on mental vacations. We need to be present and active always because our adversaries, enemies, those who are oppose us, who oppose us, are at the drawing board right now, creating a new scheme on on how they can uh, burden and confuse black folks. You know, I think the healthcare thing, this universal health care, Obamacare, was uh, an attack. You know, we, we had a major economic nuclear holocaust on black folks. You know, the crash of 2008 uh, with that recession combined with this health care thing is like, wow, you people are really know how to regurgitate the oppression of black folks. You're, you're killing us out here, uh, so that that's an issue. So we got to be we got to be present. To be present, we got to be sober. You know, uh, when I when I was drugging and drinking, it was about checking out. You know, it was about being impotent. Because I didn't care. I didn't care. I didn't care if I lived or died. Had no idea what was going on with me. Had no idea how to articulate, talk to a lot of these things. Just on the racial issue. A lot of other things. I think that's the core issue, the foundation, the root. You know, From that, I'm having all these social problems. My interactions are screwed up. Uh, I'm dysfunctional. Uh, from the drinking and alcohol use. Now that's the horror story, and there are plenty of people here, I'm sure, who drink and drug successfully. Go for it. I'm saying a maximized, thriving, competitive, exclusively black community that uh, you know can unashamedly participate in the world it's going to be people it's going to be sober people people that their minds are actively engaged unencumbered by any chemicals and things like that it's going to be a community that understands the impact of its own dysfunctions you know family dynamics you know in my Mind, my world is a, a healthy black community is going to have healthy black families. There's going to be uh, now the LGBTQ community. Don't get frustrated with me. I, I, this is my conditioning, my education, where I'm at. You know, Elton John's got a great family. I can see. But my idea is going to be mother, father kids, stable environment, education, interaction, nurturing, and all that. The family's going to be strong, however it looks. Um, it's going to understand, look, black folks need to understand. Uh, Dr. Anderson points this out, he, and he doesn't, he doesn't say this exclusively about well, he doesn't really harp on it as ex as much as I do about the continuing impact of uh, of the slave mentality from hundreds of years ago, and how that continues to present itself out in the world through in in black people and white folks, other groups as well. It still persists. Um, and I'll just say one, one, um, one element could be the meritorious manumission initiative back then, you know, created to bring division and strife among black people, distrust and things like that. You know, that's a dysfunction that needs to be uh, worked out and worked on. You know, I mean. Uh, yeah, I've been abused, persecuted by white folks in the past, but my the, when I'm really disillusioned 
is when black folks behave poorly and don't come on board with making the community better. I'll, I'll end with this uh, story here and a few more words, but I was at a school and I was tutoring a young girl at the school and there's this black dude, uh, everybody in this classroom is black, black dude is just yelling and making all kinds of noise and I'm like, brother, you know, we're here trying to study and all that. But, you know, he went into alpha mode, made it more disruptive. And so that took care of the study. I didn't want to get physical with him. He's a little bigger than me. But, you know, I didn't come to school to fight. You know, you know, like that. But that's what black folks do. That's the dysfunction. <laughs> it's like you come to school and now you got to fight to get an education. No, no, brother, you're outside. You're so far outside that I... I, let's just shut everything down, let him have his moment, and let him know he won, you know, in that time and in that space. But he's he's got to find a way to understand his damage to the black community. You know, we got to be careful and understand how we um, how we are carrying on in the black community. Uh, that's important or not. And then on that note, you want to be careful. Just because a person is black doesn't mean they're on board with black being com competitive black people in the world um, and, and developing their, a black system uh, of success, of exclusion in America. You know, this does, this is not a pass. So keep that in mind as you go out in the world. I'm a little bit over time here. I don't want to go on to it. But now we're going to get into uh, Dr. Anderson's recommendations for uh, black leaders coming up. So stay tuned. I'm Tom Lins Nye back. Day 190 out of the way. 365 days towards racial change. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.